Hi, this is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs The Playbook. And are you ready? Are you prepared? I have Zach and Olivia Williams here with me at SoFi Stadium, the greatest stadium ever created in the world. And I'm not just saying that because it's my waiting room. I'm saying it because that's a billion dollar screen. This is an incredible venue with incredible people. Are you prepared? Because they both are the founders of Prepare Your Mind. I hope you're prepared to prepare your mind for Prepare Your Mind. Welcome to The Playbook. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for having us. I was so excited uh, to have you here. And at first, not only just because your father uh, was one of my idols, someone who I met, and very few people being in my industry, you meet and they live up to their expectations, let alone exceed them as a person. Because like, we always over-exaggerate in our mind. People are human. But uh, I sat with your father at uh, Funny thing happened at the forum. Nathan Lane was premiering in the musical in Manhattan. And uh, by luck, not by force, you know, the universe sat me down next to him. And it was one of the greatest nights of my life because I, in the interim and other times, actually got to know one of my idols or heroes. And what I learned about your father was that he was a spirit of excellence, that things came through him, that he utilized his incredible mind in, in a way that I've only dreamed of using it. The, people would say comedians are intelligent. Uh, he was beyond that to me. And then when uh, his tragic death hit me, I would utilize him as an example of happiness um, and how you never know what's going on in someone's brain or mind. And then we found out what was going on in the brain or mind. And then I found out that you guys were prepared to prepare people to have great mental health. Well, you know, the story around our mental health journey uh, related to my father dying by suicide. Uh, after he passed away, I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder, generalized anxiety disorder and depression. And I started finding healing for the trauma through service. Uh, specifically, when it came to focusing on mental health initiatives and finding opportunities to be vulnerable, share my story, I found a paradigm of healing, but it didn't necessarily support my anxiety and depression. And I was doing all sorts of unhealthy things like, um, like using alcohol to manage my mental health considerations. And when I decided to stop doing that, anxiety and depression came to a head and I ultimately discovered nutrition for mental well-being through Olivia. Yeah, so I um, I suffered a similar loss in my life when I was just 10 years old. I lost my older sister to suicide and it put me on a lifelong path of thinking about mental health, whether I was consciously thinking about it and saying, how do I make sure that doesn't happen to me or subconsciously receiving it from uh, my parents and how they were suffering through the experience of that loss. Uh, and then finding a path of healing throughout my life because I had to, I had no choice um, at just 10 years old to see good doctors, see bad doctors, learn from, um, you know, hard, <laughs> hard experiences, and then continue to find a path of healing, um, ultimately deciding that I was going to be the one that leads the way for my healing. And I was the only one that really knew my body and really understood what was going on. And so got really, really obsessive about how my brain works. How, what are the nutrition elements that I need? What are the lifestyle elements that I need? And putting myself into a program to heal, not just my mind, but my body had become quite sick through the experience. Um, and I saw it met this beautiful man who has such an incredible spirit and so brilliant in business and in life, um, but could just see him suffering. And so I started to introduce Zach to some of the things that I found worked for me and he started to see success. And together we thought, hey, we need to make the world aware of this. Yeah, so through the nutritional solutions was able to sort out my experience with anxiety in two days and my experience with depression in two weeks. And you were open-minded. So a lot of times in you know, working with many athletes on uh, mental health and with them for a variety of different things that create dis-ease of the mind, which then manifests itself in physical ailments and many other things that can lead to suicide or, or, or many other things. 
a lot of times people don't have open minds. Why, why do you think that you were, because you were depressed and anxious at the time, and yet you seem to be very open when you met Olivia to be like, yeah, I'll, I'll try it. And that's probably accelerated the healing without resistance. It's a great question. I, I had tried a bunch of other solutions and that didn't quite work for me in the way that I wanted. And when I discovered nutrition and then was able to fill it out with behavioral changes, things like meditation, mindfulness, <clears throat> pardon me, mindfulness, community support, what I was able to do is find a lifestyle ecosystem that helped me find the healing I need. And I was so impressed with the outcome personally that we went about creating a company that stood for mental health advocacy, like Starbucks stands for coffee or Patagonia stands for sustainability. And really, we want to get the word out there around lifestyle interventions for mental well-being being a way of expanding one's toolkit around how they can take care of themselves. And the, Olivia, you have taken what I call the social media marketing approach to mental health that you were testing and going. And I try to suggest to people in a marketing way that nobody knows it's so individualistic. The only way we can find what works is to be really good testers and move on and, and go. There's no one fit solution. Um, although it seems like with prepare your mind and on the nutritional side, there are some stable data dependent variables that hold true for everyone's mind and then maybe some subtle differences depending on your genetic and energetic inheritance. Absolutely. And, you know, we all have completely bio-individual bodies um, and we all have come to our state of mental health in totally different ways, whether it's childhood trauma, whether it's pandemic trauma, whether it's food, lifestyle changes, all of these different things. Um, and I think the important thing is to recognize that you're a scientist or you're a marketer, you're you're the one that's going to figure this out. And even if you have the best professionals in the world, they're really going to be the ones that are leading you through a, a scientific approach to figuring out what's going on with you. Uh, we're getting so much more data as well in the world of mental health that we have never had before. And so we're starting to understand the key nutrients that are really responsible for uh, happiness and for managing stress levels. Uh, one of the things that was really new to both of us in our journey and was a big thing we wanted to tell people about was about GABA, the neurotransmitter that's responsible for bringing you back out of a state of fight or flight and neutralizing those stress hormones like cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine. And those are things that we aren't taught. We're taught about the adrenaline. We're taught about the cortisol. We're like, yeah, you're, you're ready to, to you know, battle the lion. But what happens when you don't need to battle the lion and the lion is an email or a tough conversation or traffic on the freeway and those little things add up over time? And we know that causes inflammation in our body and that in inflammation is the root of all disease. And Zach, you, you mentioned something super interesting to me um, because one of the things in my journey of understanding mental health is the idea of giving, receiving and witnessing giving and receiving. And you are a self-admitted pleaser. And you even stated at first you were trying to manage your depression and anxiety by doing good and, and helping other people. And we were talking about cortisol and I call it God's doggy biscuit, uh, that if we wanna know when we're doing or eating or saying or thinking or believing or feeling the right things, God gives us four things, and it's the doggy biscuit of life, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. And when we're doing the wrong things, when we have bad behavior, uh, we get the gift of cortisol, which creates inflammation. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins release when you give, when you receive, and when you witness it. And so I found it fascinating that you had naturally come to an understanding at least that you were getting your doggy biscuit by at least doing good, but were you able to receive as well? And how can we get other people through nutrition to open up this ease and also their behaviors to sustain the ease that some of these great nutrients allow us to, to have? Well, the thing I discovered about myself is that I was burning out showing up for others, <laughs> even though I was healing myself, what was occurring was I wasn't taking care of, my, uh, of myself in the way that I needed to. And as a direct result, I wasn't able to show up for others in the way that I wanted to. And so I wasn't able to create this positive feedback loop. 
what ended up happening was when I discovered nutri uh, nutrition, specifically started understanding more about my diet and what I wasn't eating and learning about how as a culture, we're not doing a ton of things to eat the eat what we need to eat to take care of our our mental well-being, specifically our neurotransmitter health. I started understanding that I really had to establish a foundation, something we call a mental hygiene foundation in order to, to show up for others in the way that I wanted to. And Olivia as well, I was, you know, studying this for a long time and there's three types of realm, which is interesting. So you have the nutrition, which is in the sensory side of our bodies. We have a cellular memory um, where most people think that's where this 21 days of habits are formed, behaviors, but they don't go any farther than, you know, just, do this for 21 days and it'll be part of somehow a neural pathway. Uh, but there is a subconscious that holds 40,000 of the same thoughts that do create ease or dis-ease and make it almost robotic. And then the, the one that you know applies to both of you because of your family history is the genetic and energetic inheritance, which is what I call an unconscious competency. It's a quantum uh, inheritance. So you, you have different levels why some people can have one drink of alcohol and never one another and other people can have one tiny sip of alcohol and they need it literally the rest of their life. Um, how do you and your research and your products and what you're trying to do deal with each three of these realms? So we live all of these realms every single day, all of us. Uh, Zach and I and our dynamic and our partnership live on different ends of the spectrums of this. I come from a heritage of addiction, but I myself do not have any ability to be addicted to anything. Habits are really hard for me. And Zach, on the other hand, was like me. is, is yeah. like you. He's been... I, I rely upon <laughs> uh, habits to kind of create um, some form of safety and stability. Of course, that can lead to a very negative journey. Yeah, I was with Howie Mandel. <laughs> Definitely, what you talk about what you can do and can't do with habits. Yeah. I think when you look at trying to take baby steps though to healing these things, these different attributes and first acknowledging how they're all coming together in your life and acknowledging your family history, acknowledging uh, you know, the things that you have no control of, but you do have responsibility to heal in your own life. And so it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. And that's largely the theme of mental health. Um, and we have to take that responsibility and whittle away at learning about these things and being open to that change and being open and not afraid of healing those pathways, creating new pathways, creating new habits, creating new generational changes. Yeah. And, you know, you bring up the epigenetic part of it yeah, and that activation. our cellular memory can express genes, can can potentially inhibit certain genes and uh, the key thing about what we do is we want to surround ourselves with science and medical advisory that enables us to really develop a deep understanding of an evidence-backed approach towards creating solutions that can help people it's really essential to also frame it as it's not like we're saying one solution is a panacea it's not like it it helps everyone in the same way. People need to find the mosaic that works best for them Great because point. our journeys are different and there are similarities, but we need to develop a, 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 an understanding and a, and a pathway to self-discovery that enables us to find the solutions that work best for ourselves. And it seems like both of you not only are providing nutritional uh, help with the appropriate scientific uh, backing and analysis and testing, but you combine it with this mosaic of, you know, understanding how mindset, heart set, and handset work together in meditation alone. But are there any other more Eastern modalities that are complementary or supplementary to the actual nutrition that is science based? Well, I mean, I think there's science to meditation. We can easily say there's been tons of research around meditation and uh, there's science to all of this, but bringing it all together you know, what, uh, what other ones would you include? Well, uh, you any know, movement, any movement stuff beyond meditation? Yes. Well, my mother's a yoga teacher, yeah. big fan of, of advocating for uh, 
movement oriented activity. I'm a big fan of connecting with nature and walking and so forth. Um, in terms of Eastern practices, I love acupuncture. What's actually occurred over time is that I've, I've started doing less acupuncture and have started replacing with transcendental meditation, um, which for me has been an incredible stress dump. Yeah. It's a great way to help manage my stress levels over the course of the day. Community support is key. I think there's cultures all over the world that apply different ways of finding healing and or uh, support through community connection. It's also great for the oxytocin uh, that we produce and, and um, experience as individuals. Uh, also, there's things like breath work. Uh, there are, are certain interventions like intermittent fasting that can be extremely helpful. We have a chief medical officer at our company. We tend to surround ourselves with people who are looking at Western and Eastern pathos and ethos and figure out, hey, how can we create an evidence-backed um, framework that enables us to understand how we can popularize these, these solutions to better support people getting the help and foundation that they need. And I wanna finish up with something that I help entrepreneurs with, uh, which you both are as well. So, you know, I have a saying, zero to one uh, is hard, if not harder than one to a hundred. And when it comes to mental health beyond being entrepreneurs, it's that zero to one that's so critical to raise the awareness that I want to get help. I want to change. I'm willing to do what it takes to get help, to get change. Both of you, you know, at a young age really faced uh, an extreme uh, trauma. And in order to get from zero to one, I was hoping you could share with our community, you know, what it took to get from zero to one. We know how we can help people from one to a hundred. But if they don't buy Prepare Your Mind or they're not willing to listen, if you weren't willing and open-minded you know, enough to go search and seek for your solutions and you too, Olivia, we wouldn't be here today and you wouldn't be helping millions of people. So I was hoping that each of you could share your zero to one story with me, what it was to get from a low, a basement. I always say my basement had a basement to get there to just to get to the first step? Uh, this is a, <laughs> a really deep question and I really appreciate it. I um, I was crying on the bathroom floor uh, in like some networking event. I had a full panic attack. How old were you? Uh, I was 31, uh, CEO of a tech company, fast growing tech company backed by some of the top investors in the world, um, expecting uh, really big things out of me, a first time running a company. Uh, and a big team and, you know, responsible for families' livelihoods and going through a divorce. And I had already gone through rounds of going to the emergency room because my back had so much pain in it that I thought it must have had a disc broken or something. And they kept telling me I'm fine and just prescribing me more, um, you know. Drugs. opioids and yeah, must right. relaxants and said lay down, and which I did after 10 days of doing that and came out of that. Um, in a state of like, how am I going to do this? How how am I going to run this company? How am I going to be the person that I want to be? And uh, devoted to my goal of of providing these services for the world. And what am I going to do? Because uh, going back and disassociating through opioids and muscle relaxants and Xanax, those weren't options because I had a job to do. Um, I needed to show up and, and f get investor capital. I needed to be able to run my team and I needed to be able to travel and do speaking engagements. And I knew that those were not things that were compatible. So I ended up luck of the draw walking into the right doctor's office on the right day and at just like a one medical it was like whoever was available because i said i need help and i had the greatest doctor who sat me down and said okay first we're going to do a meditation did a 20 minute guided meditation next he said i want you to look at amino acids for neurotransmitter support and he gave me a full printout of every single amino acid and every single neurotransmitter and all the symptoms related to it and said educate yourself on this and then he said, I also have some GABA product that I think you're going to want to try. And I bought it from in the office and I started to use it right away. Within 20 minutes, I could feel that anxiety, that panic lift. My shoulders relaxed, my forehead relaxed, 
suddenly I could see clearly, I could look at a to-do list and I wasn't so mind boggled by how many things I had to do that I could actually just sit down and start hammering them out one by one. And so that was my coming, you know, coming of uh, enlightenment moment where I was like, okay, this is the most, I need to start living because of my body and not in spite of my body. I need to start thinking about my body is the most important thing. I live because I have a body and I don't live in service of communicating through my body. And so that was my big change. And that's how I kind of journeyed out. Uh, for me, it's one word, gratitude. The thing, Talking my language. The thing that enabled me to go from zero to one in terms of not only mustering up the energy to embark upon a very challenging journey, but also enabled me to derive joy from the darkest times is finding an opportunity to be gracious and grateful through that journey, to have the privilege to be an entrepreneur and to create products that help people is, a, is something that shouldn't be taken lightly. And it's that gratitude that drives me forward on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just amazing as you, know, you, you think, say, do, believe, and feel certain things, and all of a sudden the right doctor appears or the right woman for you appeared uh, to give you the solutions that work so quickly. Immediately for you, you saw a difference within hours and days for you this healing is there. And what I'm thinking of as I talk to both of you is, you know, the idea of I am happy. What am I doing to interfere with it? And, you know, when we can shift the paradigm and perspective to, you know, I want to be more happy or I want to be happy to I am happy. And let's all figure out together with people like both of you. And hopefully uh, I can supplement the efforts as well because it's my life's mission to empower over a billion people to understand and be aware that they are happy and to help them figure out what they're doing to interfere with it, which is why I wanted the world to know Zach and Olivia Williams here, preparing our minds for happiness. It's absolutely an exercise we all should do every day to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of our happiness. Sorry, Chris Gardner. Happiness is the pursuit. We are here with Zach and Olivia Williams at the amazing SoFi Stadium. I'm Dave Meltzer. This is Entrepreneurs the playbook.